Hello, and welcome back to Jujutsu Kai Quest. I'm Sam. And I'm Jim. And welcome back to our anime-only Jujutsu Kaisen recap discussion podcast. We are discussing episode 35, 36, and 37, which are banger after banger after banger. <laughs> Those, these are good ones. They're very good ones. So, uh, yeah. so what are the episode names? Do you have them? I do. The one was called Dull Knife. That was the second yeah, one. Yeah, Summons the first one, then Dull Knife, then Red Scale. Okay. So, yeah, a lot of returns, a lot of beatdowns, and a lot of crazy-ass fights. Yeah, it's funny, like, uh, oh, I wanted to have the comments from last last time ready, so I'll grab those. But what, we got a comment forever ago that was basically saying, like, this person has, like, no faith in the quality being kept up this season. <laughs> and I can, I have to say, it still looks amazing, but I can start to see, like, where they're specifically saying like okay no we absolutely cannot put any more effort into this scene like yeah this scene is as good as it's going to be we need to move on to the next one that's kind of the vibe i'm <laughs> they, getting they don't got that uh the the the, the style of how the first some of the first season fights went at the end of the year yeah i think that was more like they were kind of waiting to blow their load but with this one it's like it's like a this... fucking fountain like they just keep blasting it yeah like even like, even the, the the Nami quote unquote fight or just like they that was perfect and didn't really need to have animation for it so they had to, you have to have to have the build up for it that one actually had some really good little bits yeah we'll get there but I guess first we gotta talk about uh the first episode which is hold on wait I did want to I wanted to look at the comments really quick okay don't don't listen to yourself okay oh. so. It was interesting. Uh, there was one comment in particular that I wanted to grab. Uh, so <laughs> I don't think this is like a spoiler, but uh, please more cats. I just want to read this comment from <laughs> this is basically like we kind of did like two back to back recordings last time. Yeah. But this is regarding the pseudo ghetto uh, reveal um, in that episode. So they said the fake ghetto reveal is one of my least favorite narrative choices in anything. The real ghetto had such an interesting character and motive built up with zero and hidden inventory. And it felt like uh, it followed through with the first half of the series. But after this point, the guy using his body just feels like a generically evil bad guy with no deeper motives. Yeah, we never yeah, we have zero explanation for him yet. I'm not sure if that's something that gets explained later or just like, I'm just bad, evil guy inside using a body. Well, that's the problem. I'm just that, an evil brain. Yeah, that's exactly what uh, Please More Cats is bringing up, which I hard agree. Yeah. Because uh, Ghetto was like, as you said before in previous episode, that he's like your, one of your favorite characters. In... Ghetto, yeah, by far. It's ever since like uh, the first few episodes of season two, I thought Ghetto was like the most interesting Jujutsu Kaisen character by far. And right now he exists as. Oh, you can still fight back and control your body long enough for someone to kill you, kind of thing, right now. Yeah. Th to be fair, there was another person. Uh, I won't read this comment just because of the spoilers, but uh, Ronnie, it's five seventy, said that they disagree and they think that it. They personally believe that it sets up pseudo ghetto character really well. So I don't know, but if, from my point of view, it's like it felt like we were on the cusp of like having a really fantastic ghetto someone who like you always get that thing in, in anime where it's like oh the guy was in the shadows this whole time but now that he's here it's like exciting and it's not the same guy so if that's it was like maybe he's like sharing the body like kind of like a like a like an opposite sakuna where like they're evenly sharing the body yeah. of like him working along to show how far he's kind of fallen other than just his body being high like, after you know maybe goju held back a little bit when he's going to need to kill him and that's what like because I'm alive long enough for the bodies to be shared by a curse that he yeah. had or something. Yeah, that would be interesting. Like, And we do see the hand. Remember his hand kind of moved on its own? Yeah, as in the body fighting, the, yeah. the host fighting back. So it back seems his... like there's some ghetto there. Yeah, but that he exists to be that plot point of character gets possessed, but the inside, you know, you cry out to the character, and then the inside they stop or whatever. That that trope. Yeah. Which is an unfortunate because that trope is very exhausted. It is exhausted, and it always means that like the original character's gone. Like it means they're gone, and this is like an echo. Yeah, they're they're, whole, they're there, but they'll hold back long enough for you to kill them. Yeah, we have no hope of like it's kind of like Saren from like um uh Mass Effect One. Like even, even though he can never come back, he can have his little moment of redemption, but yeah. he'll never be able to come back. I mean, like yeah, even though his brain's gone, his soul is lightly there. But yeah, we'll, we'll get. I guess we kind of get to something related to that to the body over the soul. Okay, because so... we kind of got that in this episode where the body can just mean more. Yes. So before we uh, 
before we move on any we, other comments we did get several comments of people correcting I... us saying chozo is the third death painting brother so thank you frog crown thank you uh rella rel oh wait no that wasn't well thank you rella rel for leaving the comment um thank you flavor town and thank you lodestar for pointing out yes that we're dumb and we forgot that because uh, brothers yeah, were, we, the only two of them died last season yeah because when you think of blood technique you think he's rela- somehow related to the the blood guy we met in like the, the tournament arc yeah. kind of thing who frankly left more of an impression than the brothers i, I think that was my I mean, biggest complaint about the end of season one was that it felt like a kind of a weird ending like little fight to capital i felt like they just had like a little bit of manga left to adapt and they're like okay let's just adapt the in between yeah, where it feels like, uh, what's the word? Thematically, it feels more appropriate to lump it together with this guy because it's, it's all a, about the brother. It's shit. also weird his like st- his character design is completely different to like what the other two brothers look like. Well, they all I will just say they all have extremely different character designs. So yeah, there is like a but he's more they human in the fact that they're well the other guy looked pretty human too. Yeah, but you still tell he had the eyes that were like different. And his, he had the back face. Yeah, or whatever. Uh, whatever. It's uh, I don't know. It's I guess it's supposed to kind of be like uh, like we also do see little fetuses in jars. So I guess it's kind of like the perfect ver- like These He was like the babies. perfected one. Yeah, the test two babies are all siblings. Or maybe he was like the mature, the most matured one, and that's why he looks like a human. I guess so. But uh, so yeah, let's talk about summon. Which, if you remember, that's basically our crew is going against the uh, the people that were on the roof, which is like the two weird looking dudes and the old lady. And yeah, this <laughs> Megumi and Yuji split off to go fight the the weird like I guess one hair strand kind of guy, and uh, it's like I don't, it's like when babies are drawn in like like uh, signs like warning signs where they just have like the little tuft of hair. He looks like a uh, I guess he kind of looks like, like one of those dolls. It looks like like a yes. I was trying to remember the name of it. The the what are they called? The Russian dolls. Dur- oh no! The, the, oh, drama the the drama drama. I think yeah. The those Durama like. Dolls. They're, I guess they're like fortune dolls. Like yeah. they're, they're like a big red face. If you've like seen them, you would know what the completely they are. round eyes. And I think it's tradition to like decorate them yourself. Yeah. But yeah, he, uh, he, I think he was reference, like supposed to reference that. Yes. Uh, which is fun because like his, uh, his power is really funny. I like his power. We get to that in a bit. Yes. And uh, what's it called? One thing too, I just want to say. So we, we have this little kind of jokey scene where they're like, all right. Like maybe the barrier, the people who are creating the barrier are not inside the barrier. Maybe they're outside, and they have this little joke where it's like, "Well, where would be the most like conspicuous spot to go?" And then it's like, "These look up Shibuya Tower." And I was worried. I was like, "Oh, are we gonna have to like fight climb the tower?" Yeah, and like, thank God. We were like, "I can fly." It's like a, it's a very much like a Baldur's Gate thing where like you can just bypass something by just having <laughs> a certain ability. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, they just ride the fucking yes. giant eagle up. And Eno fights the uh, the old lady and the other other child, I guess. And uh, so, yeah. The, the be- grandson. Yes. Yeah, so we kind of have a whole power thing going to destroy the barrier because one of the nails is spotted there. Which yeah, is- you need to destroy all three, apparently. Yes. And so, yeah, we kind of get fights. And uh, the Megumi uh, Yuji fight is pretty fun. Like, it's, it has a very fun technique. This is, like, stupid, like, uh, this would be, like, a Hunter Hunter kind of thing where, it's, like, it's a really weird ability that, like, you need a big brain to figure it out, which is very funny the way they do. Mm-hmm. So as we learned, he had like an inverse power, which strong attacks do weak damage and weak attacks do strong damage. And I f- fucking love that so much. And it's it's really smart how it works, too, because like Yuji makes a joke like, oh, could we just like flick him? And like, no, like there's a threshold to it. Yeah. So because otherwise, like like a, a fucking like rock hitting him could like destroy him. You need like, a jab instead of like, yeah. Yeah. So I like that it's it's structured in like a, a combat sense like you still need to put effort into your punch but just like hold back a little bit megumi's like oh i i just trapped them with the with the uh the, the rabbits because like, these are like non-offensive guys yeah. so these weak things are not going to be able to punch through and i kind of love that and interestingly he so he has a knife that he uses but it's almost for show like he, he himself doesn't really need to be offensive because of his ability it's like, one of those fucking, uh it's like like in a fighting game where it's like a counter hit Oh yeah, like his special move is just like only counters. Yeah, it's just one of those curse weapons that are just used to fight when you know you don't have any combat fist powers. Mm-hmm. So you got to use a weapon. Presumably, it's a curse weapon. We like the thing that Maki probably just gave to one of them. Like, don't you destroy this, or I'll kill you. I like the idea that Maki just hoards them all because she, she can... does. <laughs> she has it. She, has she a, just has all of them. She has an infinite storage like cube or whatever. She can just summon whatever. 
this is whatever she needs yeah we love it we love doing that don't we and so yeah that that fight going on like we could be like yeah we gotta keep up the front and then we we're, we're talking about this fight for the most part before we cut, cut to the other one yeah yeah and it's just like some really fun fight and then he stops like the punch every every time we see a punch me and jim are just waiting for a black flash to <laughs> it's happen. so funny the whole time we sam and i are like black flash black flash <laughs> and he just stops we're like, we're like fucking seagulls the best thing he just stops and then just like lightly punches him in the face like a one inch like yeah jab. it's it's a lot of fun it's kind of hard to like talk about like a lot of these fights are just like yeah they're really fucking cool to watch <laughs> i don't have too much to like say about it other than like i was very happy watching them uh but like we do see a bit of a flashback i guess we can talk about like a little yeah. flashback can we get, we get a flashback kind of kind of like uh to the the guy for fighting and everything with their like assassins that are like shit use dead bodies essentially to to disguise themselves and yeah, so the idea that we could like expand a little further is that they kind of like remove your face and there's a really cool image too of a tree where they had like they stored the faces which reminded me of the Game of Thrones. Um in the Game of Thrones there's like a faction, a secret faction called the Faceless Men and they have like little faces like in this chamber that you can like put on and like become someone else okay as like an assassin it's like an assassin technique okay um so it really reminded me of that because they that's what they do they channel like the the grandmother's curse energy into the into the mask this... and then it like you take on the the body of that person yeah because the old lady pretends to be this guy's daughter and stabs him in the neck that's crazy that <laughs> part was awesome and the, and they basically like learn okay so another thing megumi's like okay i have to use this because like, i'm talking he's not as strong as gojo that's why he's coming out now we can base that but he's beatable because he can't beat gojo yeah <laughs> and they, they even like test it further um by like saying like trying to taunt them and say like oh yeah gojo is in shibuya like you you what well, you're gonna be sorry and they're like actually we know that he is fucking trapped <laughs> we're fine and so, you know what they reminded me of like remember in Chainsaw Man the uh, the American brothers that like also disguise <laughs> yeah. themselves yeah 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 it's like them but not jokes yeah they're kind of a joke I mean, well because because they're also learning like, a bounty on like baby Gojo Wait, how much was it it was like a ton like a hundred million I think it was <laughs> I'm not sure if, if, if this episode description has like the uh it might not have the, the price on it it'd be very funny if it did yeah like Gojo is born like a toddler not even a toddler an infant. 100 million dollar or 100 million yen uh kill this j- child god i can't I, let's see does it have it on here I, no it just does, doesn't have the amount on All here right. I, th- I think it was like 100 million yen but th- they're gonna chase gojo who just looks like killua from behind he, does. he really does yeah that's the youngest well we see a baby gojo but then we see this is the youngest we've seen like a t- like we, a, see, we saw the one child gojo second when when toji in the flashback him like leaving like the clan for a oh, moment. that's right. We He's... did see that. Yeah, that's how we knew about him. Yeah, like, I fucking hate this kid. <laughs> I hate this fucking kid. This fucking kid. Uh, but yeah, I just love seeing little Gojo. It's very cute. And yeah. He that... just looks back and they all just shit their pants yeah. collectively. They know immediately. It's like, it's crazy to think that like Gojo is introduced the way he is in the series, like in episode one. Because in the universe, it's like literally if jesus came back now like that is the level of <laughs> and like... he had the power system of everything <laughs> if you actually collected his lore like <laughs> <laughs> like it's insane to think how much gojo existing changes everything I in love... the jujitsu kaisen world it's like a power level but like it actually incorporated into the plot of like everybody like takes yeah. it like knows about it yeah it's like it'd be like if goku was like evil like it's well <laughs> um but yeah, it's fun. Uh, it's 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 fun to like think about like it's like before Gojo and after Gojo. Like that's how the world is divided in this in JJK. It's I love that. And I think oh, the mo- there's a part. Sorry, there's a part where Mei Mei even says like, "Oh, Gojo could kill everyone in Japan if he wanted to." Yeah, that feels like, and the, the second episode yeah. that she says that. Yeah, it's like, just, that is the level of power we're talking. I about. I think at the end of like the last episode we talked about before this, before this recording was like. Uh, Oh, because Gojo's cashier, that's going to change the status quo where a lot of villains are going to step out of the shadows now because of this. Mm. Like, that's like exactly the pecking what orders, here. The pecking order is fucked. Yeah. And so, yeah. So we, the other fight essentially is Eno, who is a, the, the guy with the beanie, who just, who so far existed just to explain everything. And he basically puts his beanie down as like a mask. So he can use his mask down to cover his face with a channel, like four summons essentially. One with a homing drill. Which is lame. One was These bubble. are kind of lame, I have to say. One with a dirty bubble. 
It was yeah, that allowed him to like slide around. That was cool. I like the sort of integration. It's not a like summon. The, it's more of like an in, like a summon ability. They're all not just like shoot stuff or yeah. Or t- and then the f- what was the fourth one? I forget. I, do, I don't know if we even see it happen. I don't know. He gets he gets too fucked up. Because... It looks like he's about to do like a punch or something, and then he gets fucked. So the old lady goes to use a technique on the one grandson, and the one with the mohawk. Yeah, he eats like a like a vial, and he's so I, pr- I it seemed like it was like a bone shard or something. It, it was a piece of him of of a son, of a body. Yeah, and that body was fucking Toji. That was an insane reveal. <laughs> I was not, and once that happened, I, like everything became clear. I was like, "That is why we had the flashback." Like, combined with all the the ghetto stuff we had, like I totally see how we have how like a, the flashback. We have like the now. ultimate like fourth party now to this whole scenario of like you can. I don't know where he's going to do. What's he gonna do? What's he gonna lead to? If he's gonna fight fight Megumi or fight maki or something it's a real fun it's it i would either say... zn and there's two zns actively in this scenario mm-hmm. it was I... technically, technically three because megumi's kind of related to it but it, not really it reminds me of uh something that i love that oda does in one piece where like there's always a moment in the, in his really big arcs there's always a moment in like the near the end like three quarters into an arc where there's a big shocking change that just like a new element that was kind of there the whole time is suddenly injected into the plot and it changes everything. Like basically Blackbeard serves this purpose several times. Yeah. But it's like, like just to sh- like point like at Ennis lobby or um no, uh, the underground prison is that yeah. impelled down. Impel down. Thank you. I always mix those two up. Impel down. Like there's this whole arc going, they're trying to get back up. And then like, out of nowhere, Blackbeard shows up and it's just like, we had all of these enemies. We're already going to fight. And now Blackbeard is a thing fighting everyone. And it just, uh, that's what it reminds me of this. Like, this chaos principle, like this like, uncertainty. Like Mihawk showing up. Yeah. Like, oh, look at this fun little adventure. Like, you can't wait to see how they've been beating these back on the scene. Then you see this somebody like end game level. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Something that, like, <laughs> you would just, like, because you're, when you're experiencing an arc like this, you're normally like, okay, I have an idea of where we are. Like, the good guys are winning. But something like this happens, and you're just like, oh, anything can happen like this guy is so fucking powerful and i love the way that he explains it too where he's like my body's kind of weird <laughs> like <laughs> yeah but he, because like yeah he, his body something he's able to use his body and just obliterate you know and knock him down megumi rescues him and but yeah then the body like i said his body's weird his body is just so strong that it just fights back and basically takes complete control and he's back in a way and what's interesting as like a fun little writing thing is his power, I don't know if they ever say it, but essentially is nullification. Like his whole thing is that he completely nullifies any curse energy. That's why like he's so strong. Like it's like he's a zero point. So think, it's I funny because think... that's what they they initially think that the guy, the uh, Yuji and um, Sasuke, they think Megumi. <laughs> Stop Megumi. Him Sasuke. I always he's way better than Sasuke. <laughs> They think they're fighting a guy with nullification powers, but it ends up being the inverse thing. Yeah. So I thought that was really clever. Uh, and it's just it, like, a I love stuff- the little scene where Toji kills the old lady. Too. Yeah. That intersects with like this next episode, Dull Knife, which is a lot of stuff cuts back to them. I and that's when we see that scene where Toji oh, okay. in the sweater, which is yeah. very funny. But yeah, yeah. He just obliterates. You're like, oh, you're a curse user. And just silent steps in front of her, like teleports. Yeah, because she says, kill, now go kill all sorcerers. And he's like, hey, bitch, you're a sorcerer too, aren't you? Ruins her whole life. <laughs> oh, it's, I, I, it's so good to see him back. I don't like, don't know what that's going to lead to. I'm like, I was thinking, like, man, he wants to, he probably would want to kill Gojo himself. Yeah. And that's going to piss him off that he's like in a cube. Yeah, that's so fun. Like, uh, I can't wait to see what happens with him. And like, there's sorcerers everywhere. There's cursed spirits everywhere. He doesn't have a gun yet, which is like his most powerful tool, as we've seen. <laughs> <laughs> it's maybe, gonna be hard to find one in japan and maybe if ghetto or even like pseudo ghetto sees him that the ghetto inside of him will just be so <laughs> pissed to see him again yeah. like oh that could be that would be a really cool thing if like that brought original ghetto or, out for for like a minute or that memory of it just fucks up like pseudo gendo is like it's just so overwhelming like strong memory of this guy shooting shooting the yeah. one girl that he had kind oh, of that'd he be liked. so cool uh it's a lot like a lot of build up i'm so happy to see toji back he's like my favorite he was really fun. He's like, I don't really understand how I came back. It's just weird. <laughs> That's great, too. I love that he's not like a big brain guy. He's just, oh, so well, he's like Yuji, as we see later on. He's like, I don't understand yeah. this stuff. I'm just going with the flow. It shows how like dangerous the world is when you you can have people with superpowers. 
And he's gonna see like Ma- when he say like maybe if he sees Maki, he's like, oh, you're kind of like me. You don't really have like a crazy. You don't really have power or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like you gotta do some weird shit to get get ahead of everybody. Yeah. So that was a really fun little twist. And then uh, so they s- decide to separate um, Yuji and uh, Megami. Me- uh, Megamine, whatever his name Megumi. is. Megumi. 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 Basically, they basically the veil comes loose and they can just. Uh, Basically, kind of gets on the wounded outcome. We see Nami kind of dragging the one dude who got stabbed from behind. Because as we see, uh, Nabara and uh, I, don't, I forget. Her name's like her top, uh, Takea or something. The, she's the blonde like chauffeur girl. I'm trying to see if I can find find her. She gets fucked up. Yeah, I don't know. So... Akari Nita. Nita. Okay, so yeah, we we actually cut and we there's see. Got, there's, there's a lot of cut arounds in here that we're gonna try to these not maybe in order, but we're gonna like, jump around to them. Yeah. So what what happens here is Maki t- Maki sees the situation is getting bad, so she tells them to split up, get get Nita out. I'll to stick safety. with the, I'll stick with the drunk, and yeah. I'll kill everything in here. Just go on ahead, and yeah, as I said we had the flash the th- scene with Mei Mei in the tunnel. Who, Which, one thing too that is really cool, I love that Mei Mei's axe isn't like really sharp. It comes to like one point, which would just be like a super high impact point. Yeah, and it's she, like dull. And there's like one guy live. He's like, you know, you know, my my ability is a crow, which is a weak ability just for surveillance. So I had to train myself to become really fucking good with an axe. But she does say that it wasn't until she embraced her crow power that she became a true grade one sorcerer. That's great. So I'm waiting to see like some kind of crazy hyper power state or she becomes like crow lady or crow something. Crow comes out of your mouth. I, I seen that in Naruto. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this little Mimi seems great. I love Mimi. She just has so much her, character. Her, her strut. Yeah, her little strut. It's funny to see her like playing with her food too. Like... <laughs> She gets, like, I love a, a character who's a good guy but is like evil. <laughs> like, uh, like everybody in like Gojo tier related to Gojo who like, grew up with him essentially just like uh, yeah we're all kind of crazy like him. It does kind of bring up an idea of like I don't know what currently is happening in the manga but maybe we'll have kind of like a uh, sides like a, a sort of warring thing between the factions. Gojo wars. The Gojo wars. <laughs> Uh, where they clone Gojo? Oh God! Um, Don't no. give him ideas. <laughs> um, but like, I could see a character like Mei Mei like siding against our characters, and it would be fun because it's like, oh, we saw Mei Mei as a friend, and now, oh, she's an enemy. We know how strong she is. <laughs> the person who starts the war is a uh, Toto's teacher who comes in. You know, you really shouldn't sh- start a war, but if you did, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. she's a good character too. That would sometimes be we need a boost to the economy, and I think <laughs> I think a boost to the economy can be good. But hey, I'm just saying the sorcerer economy. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um. Okay. So yeah, yeah that, that was they... really fun, and we have like her fight, cause which is just like her, cause uh, she beats up with pseudo ghetto and summons a smallpox demon. Yeah, which is kind of messed smallpox up. Smallpox deity is what it's a called. deity, and she kind of realized, okay, this is not ghetto. Like this is obviously a fake in some way, cause Gojo would not, he'd not be working with Gojo, cause Gojo could just do everything by himself. So yeah, yeah, it's interesting her her thought process, cause at first she thinks that like. Yeah, Gojo is is bad. It's it's very funny because we know Gojo is like he's a very silly guy. But it's interesting that somebody would think that Gojo could be evil. Uh, I just they think, don't trust him because yeah. he easily does whatever he wants. So and it makes sense. I mean, no one man should have all that power. To quote Kanye West, no, we, <laughs> no, um, it's just too much. It's too much power for like one person. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, this little scene. I she love just, the idea of a smallpox deity. She gets instantly like domain expansioned and then just busts out of the coffin she's put into. It's very cool. She's like, haha, I've been a while since I've been threatened. This is great. <laughs> it's like the Ralph Wiggum's like, yeah. haha, I'm in danger. Neat. <laughs> it pulls out Bloodborne Axe. Yeah. Oh, it's it's so sick. Mei Mei's really fun. I love her. I love her stupid hair. Um and uh Which one... I, I wanna see just like just like uh the end have an end credit song where the animation is her braiding her weird front hair. Yeah, how does how does she do it? How does she do it? <laughs> Interestingly, where's the bulk of hair? The hair on her on the back of her head is kind of short. It doesn't go very very far I, down. I want to see like the, the so it's pull, it feels like she probably braids a lot of the back hair forward. Pull the braid out completely. I want to see what her hair looks like. <laughs> she would just look like a normal woman. <laughs> I don't like. I don't see the way to do that. There's probably I bet somebody on YouTube has like a tutorial how to braid oh, your own hair like that. There's there's gotta be at least for cosplay wigs. Like there's cosplay gotta wigs be. are I, one thing, but that must be super uncomfortable to have that freaking braid in your hair. Yeah. More, I know how uncomfortable wigs for cosplay can be. But I was like, thinking about that. I was like, I wonder how many Mei Mei cosplayers there are. I'm sure there's been a few. Yeah, 
I think I've seen like one or two pictures. And like, you always do the the flashback May May as well that we saw. Oh, did she not have? She the... had the back braid. She she didn't acquire. Oh, that's right. She didn't acquire front braid yet. <laughs> she, she hadn't learned that advanced curse technique. <laughs> That'd be funny if it was a curse technique. It's like undoing her braid. It's like a curse. Like a, this is really random. Her domain expansion. <laughs> uh, I probably mentioned this before, but in Ranma, um, there is a reveal very later on in the ser- part of the series where it just gets bad and it's just stupid. Where Ranma's hair was cursed, and of course he always has to wear it in a tiny little like rat tail tied with like a special band. That's why he has a rat tail. Yes, otherwise, if he does, the hair will explode out and keep growing. In in both genders, is yeah. like that. Okay. Um. So yeah, that's maybe what maybe maybe has to do. She has to braid her hair because it's cursed, and it'll keep growing if hmm. she doesn't braid it. That's just a theory. So the main that's basically the side plots of the episode, other than like Yuji kind of running towards the subway. But the main the main special because yes, Yuji we see Togi for a split second there saying, "Hey, I'll take care of the guys in the open." And he has a megaphone. He, he stole um uh what's it, Yuta's uh special ability from the movie where he just uses a megaphone, <laughs> which is funny. He says stop. I think that or he says don't move. Yeah, yeah. um, which is a funny little. Way to use that power. Well, if he said exercise and just be like, they all get exercise the curse themselves. I would probably like fuck him up. It would probably be too <laughs> much. All the human. Yeah, I guess he's affecting all the humans as well. I mean, yeah, I think so. Eat yourself. <laughs> eat yourself. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, the main plot is Nabara and Nita are running running around, and they encounter uh, in Selric. In Edward Elric. In Selric Edric, and he. Basically fucks around with them. Nabara. The animation, I have to say, like, this is one of the points where the animation was, like, crazy. The way he was moving, the way his the sword, hand. yeah, his hand sword moves is very cool. I hand love sword's that. very fun. I love that idea I so much. The, I hate this dude, but he got, like, literally everything coming to him. Yeah. He was, he's literally just built up to be shut on. I wonder if he was even in the manga in we, those scenes in season one I or mean, if they I, just I'm added assuming, him there. I'm assuming he was showed up for a split second because that whole end thing was just like, let's tease everybody. Like even tease like the old man who's not appeared like to do anything after that. He'd put out a guitar and like, that's all the tease you're going to get. He was like, what, the Kyoto branch yeah, it, uh, leader or the principal or something? Something like that. In charge of like all the schools, maybe. I forget. The <laughs> superintendent. He was not important other than pointing out a guitar and yeah. just being like, hmm, maybe we have to threaten Gojo, like kind of guy. Yeah, he was just like, I have a guitar attack. It's pretty neat. So, so yeah, he basically just has a fight with Nabara while Nita runs away. But at the same time, the sword's chasing her and like cuts her Achilles, both her Achilles. Yeah, she gets both her Achilles tendons sliced, which I was like, that woman is never walking ever again. Yeah, she gets, she's fine. And then she didn't walk in that. She only crawls for this. Yeah, we don't see her walk. We see her in a chair even after her like ass and legs get all stabbed up. Yeah, Nobora is not doing a good job against this guy. He's he's very strong. She also sucks in this fight a lot. (laughs) Yeah, she really does job here. It kind of sucks compared to how how How... epic she was at the end of season one. Yeah. It's like, (laughs) I feel like she will probably come back for something epic. Uh, from what I heard in the manga, she has does not really come back at like well at for all. I mean for this at least like because even as we see later they like no you you're my, I'm the power scaling minimum like you yeah that's what uh, <laughs> Nanami says yeah so the build up to Nanami though is like the greatest thing because if you just see like the footstep you see the watch yeah just, like you know he's oh he's coming we intentionally see him find a bunch of dead uh like office workers yeah he, he carries the yeah he, he also carries out the guy who got stabbed the episode before like yeah. he's kind of really pissed off and like it does like an exorcist like style like half second flash <laughs> to like the guy we saw in the flashback who died like on a mission yeah like his one friend that he had I'm like, oh, that's crazy to just do like that. Yeah, it was it was strange, but these scenes too were like insanely animated when he. Oh my god! It's when he so, just fucking he's a fucking mountain. He, he became a mountain. I feel just for this part, he just did. to show how intimidating it is. Because like he tries to like, stab, he just stands there, stab, stab him, and kick him. He just does not move. Like, did I just hit a wall. Yeah, I love the and the, the visual for that when he kicks him and it just the whole screen goes black and it's like he just. He can't like a, even touch him. He's like he a Terminator, where like he walks, <laughs> yeah. he's like, "I need your clothes, your shoes." And he goes, <laughs> "Tell me your location of your f- allies and yeah. everything." He's like, "Uh, no," and then he just like punches him and does like the 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 weakness thing comes up. Oh yeah, for a second you see like the. Because his whole thing is that he knows like exactly the right spot, the yeah, spot to hit you or like to cut you. 
He didn't even have to bring his fucking knife out. He here. just punches him. He's like, he's like, that would have killed me. Like, I know my my curse of technique is weak, but that would have killed me if I didn't yeah. have a little instinct. Like, I love how he's it. like, I'm dead. I died. <laughs> it's oh, we didn't even talk about Novora getting like the biggest concussion ever. Oh, <laughs> the Mortal Kombat X-ray. That part yeah, was her, so funny. Her head like scrambles inside. She gets CTE. When that happened, I really thought, oh my god, Novora's not gonna be able to like talk. She does her. that for a little bit, where she can't talk regularly. Yeah, like, there's a part where she's like, come on, mouth, move. Like, she just... was sufficiently brain damaged here. It's great. And so, yeah, but she gets on the monologue. Like, I need to buy time. Like, she did. Yeah, she did the mon- got on the monologue. But it's funny because she she buys time before she even knows. She doesn't even know who Nanami is. Like, she doesn't know he's coming. She, she heard she, about him, but, like, she doesn't never only physically met him. She's buying time so that she could do a counterattack, which she fails. Well, yeah. she doesn't fail, fail, but, she like. She doesn't have time for, like, Nita to go away and Nanami to crash yeah. in through there when he's about to stab Nabara. Yeah, Nanami literally breaks the glass and coming to the door, just breaks glass. <laughs> That's and- awesome. He, yeah, he, uh, he just punches him. Then he does that famous scene that I saw before this episode where it's just like him holding his hair up yeah. and like staring at him with the best face I've ever seen. And I look, I seen the manga panel and the manga panel yeah. is like nothing. I saw that too. The manga panel is, sucks compared to this. Uh, there was a lot of jokes about like, uh, do Nanami do this to me? Like a lot of horny posting about this. Or, like Every, how next, the animators are horny for Nanami here. Next con- next convention I go to, I'm going to see Nanami cosplayers. <laughs> like, if you're he, he, I love Nanami. He is like the, my, one of my favorite characters. In he's this. so fun. Yeah, he just, and we find out that the people that he killed were office workers he knew. They were like assistant. Men. Yeah. Because uh, he's not official. Like, what's, uh, were they the office, uh, or were they like JJK workers? I, the, the, the people in the suits were the JKK workers. The high, high school workers. Because they, they were like giving like updates on the phone and everything. That's and that's right, why yeah. he stabbed them. So yeah. And it, it, uh, so it hurt him a lot because these were his like friends, like his co-workers. Yeah. He doesn't want to lose any more coworker, even though he's not really a sorcerer. He kind of just does this as a part-time yeah. job, essentially. No, he does it because it pays better, yeah. but he still <laughs> likes to have his normal job and not do it full time. And he, uh, so he only hits him three times, right? I think he only actually punches him three times, but it's enough. <laughs> he, yeah, he, he it's just enough. Has, he doesn't. Um, yeah, punches him through the building into like you haven't seen the body, but like he literally just craters him and like a enough for like a light to fall down. It's great. It's awesome. He deserves it. And Nobora is like laying in like a hospital uh, bed trying to remember the alphabet. Also, his technique is called the ratio technique, if you remember. The ratio, that's right. Get, ra- get, ra- get, <laughs> get ratio. Just incel, like, get ratio to the incel. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I really love the sword hand. That was really sick. The animation for that looks so cool. Does her one thing and nails it to the ceiling as well. Oh, hand. yeah, she did have a little... She that had was, one moment. That's all she did. And they had, Navi's like, yeah, you guys stay here. I'm going to go up ahead uh it's just below you for your pay grade like <laughs> yeah so i don't know i feel like we'll see nobora show up again and do something maybe and then the- she has to this was she kind of like lost this fight she yeah, had she really she did nothing but shoot her nails yeah and may and explode the nails to make a cave in happen it didn't work out yeah, that was well. interesting that part was interesting it was almost like he they so yeah he didn't even try to avoid her attack he just was like like ah, uh, I like I like decide. playing and torturing women. I've been fighting men all day. <laughs> yeah, he does love to torture women. I like oh, his his ability that like he can only be hurt by women. That's why he really wants to fight women or something like that. He's a reverse Sanji. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much. And the episode ends with Yuji meeting up with uh, what's what's his Chozo, name? I Chozo, his name Chozo, who has you know his blood powers, and that's when it starts. And uh, yeah. So yeah, we don't actually see it. I think until the next episode, but. Yuji foolishly jumps. <laughs> he does a, jo- a Josuke from part four, and he jumps down the stairs. And that was his fatal mistake. I just love the slow like beating of the eyes. And it basically like, you killed my brother. I don't even know who you are. <laughs> yeah, he has to like, think about it. Uh, but he has the fucking epic laser blood attack. So oh, That attack is... This whole episode is like where the budget for like this part like yes. really... Yeah, he has like a laser, like a special beam cannon laser of blood, and just like it's so strong, it just goes through like this the up ground, like the above ground, and it cuts signs and everything. It's like um, what, is it guy? I always mix up Gaios and Gyron. I think it's Gaios from from Gamera, the oh. from the original old Gamera movie, the one like pterodactyl that can shoot a laser beam, but it shoots it like with. It- pure surgical precision like it slices like a car in half yeah in it's, it's like the, it's like yeah it's like the strongest laser but there's one 
uh movie in Gamera where there's like a like a like a knife nose monster and it's so reflecting and strong that it just it, reflects the laser and slices his foot off. Yes, that's he. That's Guy Guyron, I think. Ugh, Guyron is the knife phase. It's up there with like Ultraman's like circle attack that's like slices through everything. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's and like it's my, always so quick to throw. It has like zero charge time. It splits the monsters and gore and viscera comes out of them. <laughs> I love that like the most strong attack don't have any build up. When we saw this in Ultraman, I literally popped the hardest for it. I'm like that is like the strongest ability <laughs> and he wins with it um He's, he called it so much gore to ha- appear in tokyo but so the mechanics behind chozo or chozo whatever his name is his blood power is really cool and they explain that like the reason why he can shoot it like a beam is because it's com- hyper compressed and because which is also how dio shoots his eye laser beams it's just compressed like eye fluid yeah and the, f- and the difference between him and like as later on we learned the guy from the one clan we met in the tournament arc is that since he he's a, he a curse he doesn't really need the blood he can just use it as best as he can with no weaknesses because mm. for a human you know use your blood that you you can't it's your it. blood <laughs> yeah he get, and the cool thing about this fight is just like could they get in the close range and like explosion like little grenades of blood and because uh he, he just sucks the blood off of yuji's face i think that's the coolest like, it's you'll so see cool. that with blood powers he blood power like i'm just gonna like blood bend you and exactly you, or like re- explode you from the inside no he just has like blood uh, it's kinda, like it's being peeled off almost. it's like a water like a water bender yeah you know, mm. where like, yeah they would heat with water but then maybe absorb the kick the moisture out off of your, off of them and then back as a weapon it's so cool. Also, just the idea of like hyper compressing blood so it shoots as a laser beam is so fucking cool. The grenades are so cool. And then later on, he like you know could harden up like in the inside to like make it like a, like an armored punch and like armored skin essentially. Yeah. Oh, and he also does like little blades too. Yes. Like blood blades. Just a lot of really really cool. Visually, just awesome. And it's such a cool setting too. Like they they really put a lot of care in in rendering these backgrounds to look like real like a real location. There's a, a weird because there's a part on the floor it's like, it really is like a starting point because he gets set back there knocked it back he, try, he tries yeah. to get close range he's getting knocked back and that's like always the shape to divide like okay i'm back at square one that's and that's also a great thing for a fight because like we're talking like sometimes that gets lost in like these big like power fights where you need to have like a really convincing like hook and that's like a really great hook of like it's all about like yuji getting to him first and then once he does the whole bathroom plan and like everything changes like his whole strategy has to change also before he gets to the bathroom he gets like holes in his arm like he gets messed up yeah it's this guy is like a very strong threat which is cool because yuji's whole thing is that he's so overpowered that like he's a punch guy yeah every other fight is he's just gone. Been boring but this fight was like yuji was like really put up against the wall here he's like oh yeah this is this is messed up man like i need a plan and mikamaru's like yo there's only a 10 percent chance of actually working but you go to the bathroom and just smash that up. Break every toilet. Use that generic uh, sound effect of breaking, like, <laughs> yeah. porcelain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, the, the, the whole strategy is we're going to dilute the blood, essentially, and you can't not gonna be able to do anything. This is something. So one thing that uh, our one of our comments in the past have said is that the writer for JJK gets, like, really hung up on, like, small details and will, like, go on, like, extremely long sentences explaining it, it. It did happen. And that does happen here, but I love it because it's very interesting. It's a very JoJo thing that happened yeah. as well. Like, we just, like, talk about the stupid little thing of, like, diluting blood. It goes into the idea that basically, like, his he couldn't compress the blood because due to, like... There's some other thing that happens, but, like, once the blood is, like, splattered and, like, uncompressed... It, because of osmosis, uh, all the red blood cells immediately just expand and die. Yeah. So he can't use the blood anymore. It just washes away, which is really cool. And then that forces him to put CQC. his back against the wall. And he's like hardening his inside blood, which is also really cool. <sighs> yeah. It, it, like, he had, but he had like one hidden like bullet left that he was like kind of hiding and slowly. And like he shoots it through his through his clothes and like destroys his liver. It does say that his... uh. But <laughs> it does say that it it, it destroys Yuji's liver. He, he doesn't need that, and so yeah, the whole fight the fight happens, and Yuji fucking loses. He really does, uh, which was kind of shocking because he puts up a hell of a fight. Because like something happens to him where like like a flash happened and like it's, it stopped him from attacking him, and then he got yeah he got like royally like destroyed. Yeah, he almost had the upper hand. Like they even did that thing that the movie kind of did where. I can't remember the movie did it or some in season one where like the music kind of like staccato like dun 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 as he's like pulling back for his epic big punch. 
but then yeah he doesn't he it's doesn't like, get it the guy something stops him yeah well i think the whole thing was that he he was thrown off by the fact that he was able, the guy hardened his like one wound. oh yeah his his uh yeah his ribs because he shows him that yeah he got like ko'd he's like he's like really like he's still breathing he's about to go finish him off and then Sakuna's, he looks really fucked he's lost it's holes in him man and Sakuna's like damn you lost to this guy and then he just like just sees eyes and then he he basically gives choso like flashes of like fake memories of him of yuji being his brother and he cut is literally like the akira meme have you seen like the flash? <laughs> yeah. And he's just like, no! I don't want to feed you pasta <laughs> with my brothers and test tube brothers. This is like, I was so taken aback by how weird this ending was for this fight. It's so funny. Sakuna's like, I know what's going to like fuck this guy up. <laughs> also, it's kind of interesting. They they played with like an aspect ratio thing again. The show likes to do that a lot. Same with Chainsaw Man. Um, It's very like, like a uh, aspect ratio, like to represent something. And here, like the... There's like a flashing and the flashing of like the the sidebars on the screen that that uh you'd see like when you watch like something that's in four four on like a sixteen by nine whatever, and in his flashback it's like an old four four like VHS recording almost of memories. Mm. It's just very interesting stylistically. It felt like that could have been just like a jujitsu stroll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh, but oh yeah, then it was th- a funny little thing. And then. Uh, what are they called? Get Ghetto's daughters, adopted daughters, show up and assume they're going credits, to treat yeah. him. So, so yeah, he'll be good. But also, like, remember in like episode three when Yuji like ripped his own heart out because Sakuna made him. Like, yeah, Yuji, Yuji's fine. He's like Sakuna. If you don't heal me or don't help me, uh, you're gonna die. Or no, no, Sakuna did that, and then yeah, Yuji fought back anyway. But Sakuna hasn't really been a factor for like a while. So. Yeah, so it was actually like cool to see him again. I was actually excited to see Sakuna and like. The way that they tease him, just like as he's so beneath, or this everything's so beneath him that all he has to do is like play around with the bad guy and make him like love Yuji, <laughs> like falls in love with Yuji. Yeah, if he fed my brother spaghetti. <laughs> but so, what is gonna happen with Chozo now? Like Chozo's not gonna want to hurt Yuji. He's literally mind broken. He'll come back and he'll probably fight Yuji. Again. I think he'll be a good guy. I don't think so. I think he'll be. There's no good guy curses yet, really. Um, I think you're right. Well, he's he's not a curse. He's a he's a cursed womb. Same thing. They're hu- They're part human. Yeah, but he he's going more on the curse side. Have you met Have you met a good curse womb yet? No, they're all evil. Yes, but he could be the first. I don't know. I'm just excited for Toji's back. I I can't wait to see what he does. He is so strong. I don't know how who can beat him. Uh, me. No one. He is like. Little Dragon Ball Z character, yeah. With, but he's, so he's strong. I'm excited though. I want more, but and we won't be. Able, well, I guess by the time we get back from vacation in Japan, well, we'll episodes. have a good like three episodes at least. I think. Yeah. So that'll be fun. I'm excited for that. But any anything we forget or any of the kind of like manga comparisons you in the comments, we will gladly hear them and we will probably talk about them in the next episode like we did this yeah. one. Well, there'll, there will be lag time because between the last two, there wasn't any time in between for comments, but there will be now. So <laughs> your comment will get read next time. Maybe. Maybe. So, yeah. Um, I just want to say other we, we got a bunch of other comments in the last one, too, just saying how people love uh, hearing our reactions. <laughs> going from it, going from hating Jesse Kaisen earlier <laughs> to like finding this peak episode. I, I freaking love these are probably my favorite three episodes that we've watched yet. Other than like I already did like, the flashback stuff. But like these three episodes consistency of like everything different that I've gotten was awesome. Like. The Toji stuff, like the fun, the fun curse spirit, are high. I like, a highlight. Like I said, the only, the only like low light I can think of is still just like, I kind of like you know, we talked about earlier, like, pseudo ghetto stuff. Yeah, that that still really does sting, and I want it not to sting, but I I am afraid that that was just like a bad choice from the writer. <laughs> He's still there unless they find a way to split the bodies up, which I don't see them I don't, doing. I don't see ghetto coming back. Um, uh, I said, unless ever. something happens where, like, they free Gojo, uh, seeing Toji again causes, like, you know, the old Go- Ghetto uh, come back, and then they team up while he has control of the body to fight him. Because they didn't really get That'd a chance. That'd be kind of cool. I don't think they really got a chance to fight him together that much. No, they didn't. They so, sp- explicitly did not. So I think that would be super fun to see. Oh, one little detail, too. We learned that uh, apparently Ghetto did burn up a lot of his 
or pseudo ghetto, whatever. He burned up a lot of his curses, so he only has a few left. <laughs> yeah, smallpox. But he does have the smallpox deity, <laughs> which visually kind of reminds me of the uh, the weird elephanty one that that uh, they fight in the movie. That okay. uh, the one I'm it, still waiting like, for him to come back. The main character, Yuda? of the, yeah, yeah. that he was teased in the OP of last season. He was. I wonder if that. And was... And for a split second, he was shown like the end of the season. I think as well. Well, no, he's shown in the movie. I don't remember if he was shown. He in was season. shown. He was shown for a split second. Oh, I think you're right. Yeah, of him just walking like... with like the other dude. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like if he shows up, it might be like in the next. That season. dude switched sides though. The the dude that, that you walks around with, like the the one black dude, uh, the blacksmith the Ni- guy. Was I think. he? Was he like Nigerian? I think something like that. But remember, he's walking around with him. I'm not sure. Like. If they're both good, or just he seems turn. like he's good. I yeah. think he. I think he was just kind of. He had like whips, didn't pull he? To the wrong. Yeah, so <laughs> he, had, he had like whips or arms. He had like an ancestral whip that his family had been using for a thousand years, and and Gojo destroys it in like two seconds. <laughs> he just burns it up because he's so strong. Uh, poor man. But yeah, I'm. I'm can't wait to see where this goes. I hear. I've been hearing good things about Shibuya arc, so I'm excited that this is actually you know going as well. Yeah, sitting through it and like I can. I just the density of like quality fights. I think it really speaks for itself. Like why people like it so much. Yeah. So anything... he needs a little bit more plot. I think all the Gojo stuff was like all the front loading plot. And like I just want more from like pseudo ghetto. I just want to know more. Like, give about me more it. Toji stuff. Give me Maki fight now. Mm. Like yeah, I want to see what the ZN does. And you see the family reunion between like Toji and, and Megumi now because his dad. Yeah. You finally meet his son. That'll be interesting. They'll <sighs> probably just be like, I don't care. Like they're both just like, I don't like, care about you. This is your son. This is your dad. But I don't give a shit. <laughs> I, don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't give a shit. But uh, anything else? Or should I plug, uh, no, or plug really up the, the hole in his liver? Yeah, p- plug up the liver. <laughs> Thank you all very much for listening. I've liked the video. Give it a like. Give, subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment. You can. Uh, leave a review anywhere uh look forward to november we have another jujitsu kaizen we'll have attack on titan the final episode do you want to see my reaction to the finale for it's the coming. first time ever once i get back from japan we'll have that right like, record it um and i guess well, and jojo coming back as well so if you want your name shouted out on the jojo episode you know leave whatever if you're comfortable leaving on the patreon and you also can follow the, the podcast on twitter or me and jim separately and i think that's it also just good news you can live about a day or two days without a liver so oh, that's good the girls will just plug it right in they'll just <laughs> plug it <laughs> right they up. just get bits of their own liver and give it to a them. cursed liver cursed liver Ooh. i don't know i i don't think we saw too much of their i can't remember if we seen any of their power no, other, other I, than they fucked up a village i'm not sure if they were in the movie like, didn't much in the movie they may have, like, like had a like, a brief glimpse. I've been a while since I seen the I movie. I can't remember. They may have had like a, like a that split second where you've seen everybody doing their thing, for like yeah. they could have shown off there. But I can't remember. It's been a while since I saw the movie. But oh, I'm excited. And with that, I think that's everything. Unless you have anything else to plug. No. All right. We will see you next time then. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye bye.